Hi, I'm Nairi. I'm running an adoption channel and I've got two adopted boys. So please subscribe if you're interested in anything to do with pre or post adoption. Today is more of a chatty video. I want to talk to you about this subject of is love enough in adoption? And I think people question if love's enough because obviously some children have been through such horrendous uh, histories and by the time they've actually come into adoption, there's a lot to undo and a lot of trauma that's resulted from abuse. The first thing to say about my boys is that we love them unconditionally and that has got to be the basis for any adoption in my opinion. You can't adopt for any other reason other than you want to love a child unconditionally because sometimes you feel like you're not going to get anything back from them. That love may not be returned and incidentally that is the same with biological children. Children can be ungrateful sometimes and children can be unloving. The thing with adopted children that are different from biological children is they have a different starting point and so their starting point is a lack of trust of adults and so they're often testing you out, testing the boundaries out and trying to find who they are and you're that sounding board. I think that happens with children in general but I think with adopted children it happens a lot more that the more confident they become with you the more they might test out your love and test out the boundaries because they want to see that you're going to stick with them, they want to see that you're not going to leave them, that they're not going to be taken away, they're not going to be let down. Now obviously with a baby, if you're adopting a baby that's not the same, they don't have the conscious memories of being taken away and they don't have conscious memories of abuse. So it is different with a baby and if you're adopting a baby you might have different experiences than what I'm describing and you might find that that baby comes and you bond really quickly and it's just pretty much like life life is normal and you don't have experiences of difficulties with either giving out love or receiving it. I think for most adopters though if you've had biological children you will find that it takes longer to bond with an adopted child normally even if you haven't had biological children you might expect that as soon as the child arrives you're going to have a rush of love and a feeling of bonding when you have a child naturally uh, when you first hold the baby you generally have that feeling but not always and I think with adoption it could be the same that some parents might have a huge rush of love toward the child but others may not and I think that can panic adopters a lot if that happens that they don't have that kind of like inward feeling of love toward the child and that they wonder whether they're going to be able to make it work. I think with our boys we had the initial rush of feeling sorry for them because they came in as foster children in a terrible condition and I would say that over a, a long period of time that love has grown and deepened. The reason why I know that that's happened is because if I think that anything has happened to one of the boys either at school or something bad might have happened to them I now get the same panicky feeling that I would get with any of my bi biological children. Is love enough? Well in a way no. I'm going to say to you love isn't enough. Love is the foundation for everything and love is the best thing that you can offer a child because if it's unconditional and you don't expect anything back then they're going to thrive over time. But for adopters I think that you do need other things as well because you can begin to love a child but if you don't have some of these other things that I'm going to mention you're probably not going to make it through, you're going to find it too difficult. So these are some other things that I think you need as well as love. And I hope I'm not being too controversial for you because obviously I do think you have to have love. You can't have all these things and not have love or not try to be loving a child and bonding with them because then these things wouldn't work either. You need patience. A biological parent or an adoptive parent needs patience. And as our children have come into adulthood, our biological children, we've realised that as much as we've enjoyed the early stages and given them the structure for how we think would be a good way to live, it doesn't necessarily th follow that all of those things will happen when they're adults, but they still need, they still need to come back to us, they still need our love. And so we need patience to be accepting of, of where we're at and the status quo. 
sometimes I'll look at the boys and I think, oh, you're doing so well, like you're just amazing for what you've been through, you're doing so well. And other times I'm, I'm panicking because something major's happened and they've brought it on themselves. And so that patience of accepting the good with the bad, the good days at school where, I, where I'm proud and they come back and say something really lovely, and the bad days when they've done something behind my back and I'm really upset and I'm distraught. Resilience as a person. Now, my husband keeps saying to me that I'm really resilient. I don't think I am. I think he is, but I guess together we manage to kind of muddle through. Now, you may be a single adopter and you call on your network, which I'm sure you're finding is the most valuable thing if you're already an adopter that you ever could have had. Resilience to take the knocks, I've had a lot of knocks in my life right the way through from childhood, right the way through. And so sometimes when I get a knock and I get knocked down, I do go into quite a place of um, feeling really low. Um, so I've got to pick myself up and remind myself that nothing lasts forever and the bad times don't last forever. And I think as an adopter, if you're early in the process, you will realise that you will get a lot of knocks, but resilience to that, it's going to be a really strong thing that you can have sometimes you need other people to help you with that resilience so sometimes you just need to go off and do something different or you need to call on a friend or a neighbor whoever to help you build that resilience back up again but it's really important that you find ways of doing that endurance same thing as resilience but longer term like you can never look in the short term with a situation so say you've just adopted and you've had a child for like two months and you just don't feel that the attachment and bonding is going very well it's nothing in this great scheme of the lifetime of the child and so endurance i see different as resilience i see that it's for, you're in for the long haul so you shouldn't worry if early on you don't feel that because in a few years time you might feel a really strong bond and attachment there and you never realized you could ever have such a deep feeling toward a child so you've got to be looking at the long game and having that feeling that you're there for life you're there even when they're adults and basically you're in for the long haul self-belief i think that's possibly why i first started the channel because um, we do have a lot of issues with our boys and sometimes people will be not critical exactly but they don't know what we go through and they'll have lots of suggestions and sometimes you could have self-belief that you're doing the right thing for your own child because you will get bombarded from all angles you'll get bombarded from what school think you will, should be doing you'll be bombarded from the internet <laughs> even bombarded from people like me you just got to know, you've got to know in your heart that you are doing the best that you can do, you're loving in the best way that you can love, you're providing in the best way that you can, and not really let anybody else try to dictate to you how it's going to go. Because in reality, some of the early people that are there to support you will fall off along the way, and you will regain new contacts and new friends, and you will develop things over time and ideas over time and you will develop yourself over time as well so having that deep-seated belief that you are doing the best you can and the best for your child it is what is going to keep you going as well you've also got to be practical and realistic so some children come with a higher level of trauma than others and they come from a starting point that's very different from others there is a lot to undo and you've got to be realistic about how much there is to undo and accept them for where they're at you've also got to be realistic about what family involvement might, ha might happen later and whether you believe your child will seek out the adoptive family and want to know more about them and want to integrate them into their identity because there's going to be nothing you can do about that if that's what they want to do and i happen to feel quite strongly that one of our children will do that and there'll be nothing we can do about it and so i'm preparing myself for that now because children don't stay children forever they grow into adults with their own opinions and ideas and so you have to support them through you can still be there to tell them what you think is the right i think for them to do again in love but you've got to be realistic about their background their family what they've come from and the level of trauma that they've started with because if not you're going to be disappointed all the time however much you love them bonding or attachment see attachment is a thing that i speak a lot about on my channel but what people don't realize is attachment is a theory 
it's not a given. There's no scientific proof around attachment. It's just a very useful structure in which to look at your relationship with your child and, and, and the way that you can therapeutically parent them to help them. Bonding comes and goes, I think. Attachment comes and goes, and I think children's attachment changes. So over a period of time or over a lifetime, you're gonna be able to see attachment grow and develop um, as you consistently deliver your parenting with love, then bonding and attachment will develop over time. And if I look back, I can see that my children are much more attached to me now than they were three years ago or five years ago. But when I was in that moment, I thought different things about it. I thought, I thought it felt differently. I may have thought that they were really attached and really bonded then, but looking back, I realized they weren't because there were lots of indications of that. The thing to really understand is that adoption and your parenting is very changeable, as are the children. So over a period of time or over their lifetime, you love them, but things will dip in and out and attachments and bondings will change over time. There's no need to worry if you have a few months where you feel quite distant from your child and they seem quite distant from you because they're going through maybe a period of change or you're going through a period of, of difficulty. And it won't mean that because you haven't succeeded to feel that level of bonding and attachment during that period of time that you won't get it back. It's down to the endurance and longevity of adoption. So guys, I hope that helps you. I hope that's not too waffly. It's more of a chatty video. Other videos on my channel, I might just give you points which are quick, tips which are quick, so you can just dip in and out of information. This is more about my kind of heartfelt feelings about things. So I hope that's helped you. And if it has, and you've enjoyed my content, please subscribe and check out all the playlists on my channel. Thank you.